Oh, hey there, pesky bugaboo, or something like that. Um, how do you deal with family who doesn't want to listen? Well, let me tell you something. Uh, I don't know the answer. So, it's pretty sad. You paid for a vacation and have a problem with it. Um... Well, you know what? If she listens to the TBN preachers like Joel and Joyce, um, let me tell you something. God deceives people. He does. Oh, that don't sound right, Chaplain Bob. Well, let's take a look. All right, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 14. Now, Ezekiel is probably the wildest book in the Bible. And uh, he was one of the major prophets when Israel was going down, 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 down. So, here it is. Well, let's read Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. Well, so the Lord's calling this prophet the Son of man. These men have set up their idols in their heart. Now, a lot of things can be an idol. A spouse can be your idol. Uh, money. Sex. I mean, you know. I met guys that they just live for female company. You know, I'm trying not to be crude. But, uh, you know, some people want power. Some people want fame. You know, movie stars, whatever. But he said, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity, their sin, before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? In other words, they put everything but the Lord. Uh, well, anything but the Lord was first in line in their, in their lives. And the Lord saying, should, should, should I be, you know, should these people be asking me anything and I give them an answer? And the question is, no. You know, let them go talk to their idols and have their idols talk to them. Verse 4. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God. Every man of the house of Israel that set up, setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity or sin, before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Wow. The Lord's going to answer them the way they want. Oh, you want money's more the most important thing in your life? Well, money is... I'm going to answer him with money. Verse 5. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent. Repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. See, God gives these people a chance, but I don't know. For every one, verse 7, for every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me. So they, they are separating themselves from the Lord, and setting up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. 
and I will set my face against that man. That's scary. And will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off. Cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 9, here's the punchline. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Oh, yeah. You know, when you want the Lord more than anything else, he'll be truthful for you, to you, and for you. But when you want everything else but the Lord, the Lord's going to deceive you. He'll send you Joel Osteen. He'll send you Joyce Myers. Oh, yeah. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him, destroy him from the midst of my people Israel, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment, punishment of him that seeketh unto him, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. So there you go. You understand what TBN is all about? Right here. T Joel and Joyce are modern-day prophets. You know, you go to a church for 30 years, you got a Masonic pastor that's an unsaved Masonic pastor, preaching the pre-trib rapture, Zionism, uh, as if the Antichrist United Nations that created the Israeli state in 1948, do you know that their publishing company was called, originally was called Lucifer Publishing? Now they call it Lucis Publishing, L-U-C-I-S, but originally it was Lucifer Publishing. Yeah. Who created that Israeli state in 48? The United Nations, not the Lord. But the Masonic pastors will tell you, oh, it's the Lord's hand in that. Yeah, the Lord's hand was involved in the creation of the 48, 1948 Israeli state. But it's not the fulfillment of the nation of Israel. It is the fulfillment of the wheat and the tares, the weeds God's gathering the tares to be bundled, to be burned. Boy, you won't ever hear that preached in a 501c3 demon nominational so-called church. No. So, you know, if this aunt of yours had bothered, well, probably doesn't even use the right Bible, but if, if it did have the right Bible and read the right Bible, um, they would know that the, what the so-called pastors are teaching are garbage. Rome didn't kill Jesus. It was the you-know-whos that killed Jesus. But I've had, you know, and the... Um, the you know who's are antichrist, but you'll never hear that taught. You'll never hear that taught. They'll never tell you that they they are antichrist. <laughs> uh, I gotta hope I can remember a link, but you could send her a thing where the um, ask her about uh, ask her where is this in the Bible, and then send a picture of where the rabbi is st sticking a circumcised baby's penis in his mouth. And I'll send it to you from an Israeli newspaper so she can't say that it's anti-Semitic. And then you could ask her, where's that in the Bible? I can't find it. You know, and, and she can give you, uh, tell you with her 30 years of uh, Bible experience and knowledge and being a Christian for all that time. Yeah, they really do that. The rabbis will slice the baby's skin and then 
stick it in its mouth to suck the blood. Yeah, they really do this. And then when you point it out, they'll say, oh, it's a very, very, very small group that does this. Oh, really? There's a, they're the largest uh, group of so-called orthodox you know who's that do that that group that does this? They got a thousand different centers that do does this nationwide. There's 300 of them in the United States alone. 300 of these places. I used to pass one on my way to work. Um, oh, I got to make this a part two. Another thing that uh, is that uh, these pastors will tell their congregation to bless those that hate and curse Jesus. Let's take a look at Psalms 139, verse 21. King David writes, Do not I hate them? Oh, but Chaplain Bob, I've been taught that hate is wrong. King David says, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? King David hates those people that hate the Lord. And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they bless those that hate Jesus. Now, in Second Chronicles, look at this. Second Chronicles chapter 19. Now remember, King Jehoshaphat was a good king. He was. He was a good king. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, uh, seer is just an old, old, Old time, Old Testament word for prophet. Okay, it, it's just. Let me take prove that to you. Because they were called seers because they could see uh, the future. Um, in First Samuel nine nine, before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, so. You know, somebody wants to go ask God a question. Thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. All right, so. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him, King Jehoshaphat, the good king of Judah, and said to King Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles 19, verse 2, so he said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Wow. So should you help the wicked and love those people that hate the Lord? Do the you know who's love the Lord Jesus Christ or do they hate him and curse him? Ah. Your favorite aunt blesses those that hate Jesus? Probably. Chances are. In her 30 years of... And if she read the Bible, she'd know who killed Jesus. Yeah. But you ask these people, oh, it's the Romans. My Bible says Pilate tried to release him. Pontius Pilate, the Roman cure... Uh, per, um... Well, proconsul, whatever, yeah. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath, wrath upon thee from before the Lord. See, King Jehoshaphat went to go help King Ahab, King of Judah. I mean, I'm sorry, King of Israel. Ahab was King of Ju Israel. Jehoshaphat was King of Judah. Ahab, who was wicked, he had a wife named Jezebel. Maybe you've heard of her. He asked King Jehoshaphat, Hey, uh, I'm fighting these Syrians here. Can you help me out? 
And Jehoshaphat said, sure. You know, we're all brothers. Uh, you know, Israel and Judah, your people are my people, and my people are your people. But God did, was not happy with Ahab. Ahab was evil, and his wicked wife Jezebel was even worse, if you can believe that. And Jehoshaphat sent his army to help him. So, shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So, I hope this answers your question. If, they're li if she's listening to false prophets and blessing those that hate Jesus, and she's got pride because she's been a believer for 30 years studying, I run into these people all the time. That was one of the reasons why I went and got a Bible college degree. Because they used to say, well, I got a doctorate in Bible studies. What, what, are, what are you? What do you got? Well, now I can say I've got a master's degree. But um, that's why they, they, these Baptists especially use the uh, dispensational theology. Because even if I show them something in the Bible, they'll just say, well, Oh, no, that, that's the wrong dispensation. That doesn't apply to the church. That was for the Jews. So they just explain it away. Seriously, they do. So, so when your uh, aunt finds out that she might have to die for her faith, she'll be like, wow, Jesus was a false prophet. He told us he, the pre-trib rapture, and, and it didn't happen. You know, if she bothered to read the book of Acts, she'd read about people like Stephen who died for their faith. But no, they ain't going to do that. Oh no, God wouldn't be, God wouldn't let us die for our faith. God's not a wife beater. We're the bride of Christ. He loves us. He would never let us suffer persecution. No, no way in, uh-uh. What do you think is going to happen when they find out they got to die for their faith? They'll deny Jesus. Oh, you mean I can't eat unless I have the mark of the beast? Well, we're not going to call it the mark of the beast, but... So, I'll, I'll take it. Okay, put it right here in my right hand. You know, I don't see 6666 on my hand. I don't see that, so this can't be the mark of the beast, because we're not going to be here. We're going to fly away before the mark of the beast happens, so... How can you talk to these people? You can't, is my guess. But I'm going to send you the um, thing about the rabbi sticking the baby's penis in its mouth from an Israeli newspaper, and you can ask her, ask her, where is this in the Bible? I can't find it. And, of course, she'll, she'll probably deny it, and then if she does ask the pastor, the pastor will say, oh, 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 it's just a very, very, very tiny sect of Jews that do that, you know. It's it's not widespread at all. Never mind that there's a, um, there was a um, epidemic of Jewish babies in New York City getting herpes because the, the rabbi had oral herpes and was spreading it to the babies. Yeah. You know what herpes does to a baby with no with a compromised immune system. Yeah. Yeah, New York City actually had, they passed a law saying that they had to, the rabbi had to get consent from the parents before he sticks uh, the wee-wee in the, his mouth. Yeah. That's the kind of sick stuff that they do. And, and these are, these are, but these are, you know who's chosen. Oh, yeah. Chosen by who? The devil? That was one of the, you know, hearing that they were the chosen people and living among them down in Miami, 
That was one of the reasons why I walked away from um, Jesus when I was in uh, middle school. But if I'd have bothered reading the Bible, I would have found out that it was a lie. Yeah, I believed in middle school, junior high, whatever you call it now. And, but I walked, I, I ran away. So if these are God's chosen people, then Satan is God. That's I used to say that. Seriously. I used to believe. Then I went to high school and s discovered uh, drugs and rock and roll. So, yeah. Not proud of it. All righty. So, how do you talk to family? Shush. Yeah. Uh, how do I talk to my Bible, family about the Bible? I don't really. Pointers. <laughs> do I have any pointers? Uh, girl, let me tell you something. It's Jesus warned that our enemies would be they of our own household. And boy, he wasn't kidding and he wasn't whistling Dixie. Yeah, our enemies are going to be, our our foes are going to be, they of our own household. So, all right, well, sorry for the bad news.